Chiefs Kingdom. We're back with another podcast for that ass. And today we're talking about Justin Ross possibly not making the 53-man roster. It looks as though Chiefs Kingdom has given up on Justin Ross seemingly overnight, Steve. Heavy on Chiefs has come out with a story. Chiefs predicted to cut fan favorite wide receiver. Going to be an uphill climb, says Michael Obermuller. Steve, let's talk about it. Before we get started on Justin Ross, make sure to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. 95% of you viewers are not subscribed. Do your boys a favor and hit that button. We're trying to get to 20K before the season ends. Also, hit that like button. Get this out to more Chiefs fans. Mike, everybody was hyping up Justin Ross like crazy this offseason to the point where they're like, we don't need D-Hop because so we much. have Justin Ross. He can be a WR1. He can be our D-Hop. So much. It was the crazy hype. And and here we are always trying to check everybody like, hey, slow your roll. Check your expectations a little bit. You're putting too much on this kid. He's never played a snap in the NFL. And lo and behold, we get closer to camp and closer to that 53-man roster, and they're all like, he's not going to make it. Like, what the heck happened? They're I trying to you, save face. They're trying to save face, Steve. They wasn't being honest with Chiefs Kingdom the entire offseason. Uh, they were out here trying to get clicks left and right. He's the secret weapon. He's God's gift to the to the wide receiver room. Look at him right. climbing the hill. But they wouldn't tell you the truth. They wanted the clicks, but they didn't want to tell you the truth. These two guys told you the truth. We said, yeah, so look. We got, we got yelled at a lot in the comments at, for it. But we said, look, Justin Ross has a chance. He's very good. He's very he, He's a good athlete. But you got to let this guy get in the camp. You got to let him put the pads on. You got to let him play a little bit. People were saying he's wide receiver one. He's a pro bowler. He's we don't need D Hop. We have Justin Ross. Come on, like quit with that. Uh, the story actually says this, Steve. Needless to say, there will be tough decisions to make at wide receiver when the dust settles at the end of training camp, and fans probably won't love all of them. For example, Chiefs Digest insider Matt Derrick has already predicted that the popular 23-year-old Justin Ross will be cut. They were referring to this article right here, Rosterology, Projecting Chiefs 53-Player Roster Two Weeks Out from Training Camp by Matt Derrick. He goes on to say, MVS, Sky Moore, Kadarius Toney, and certain locks to make the roster if healthy. They're certain locks. Derrick wrote in his July 5th story, Justin Watson has a guaranteed contract that makes it 130 k more expensive to cut him than it does to release him, so that means he's going to make it. Rasheed Rice is this year's second-round selection. Richie James has the best resume for a six receiver at the moment, catching 57 passes and 569 yards, four TDs with Daniel Jones and the New York Giants last year. We even had Charles Goldman, Steve. He gets on Twitter. On July 6th, Goldman followed up on the topic on Twitter after a fan asked who his preferred seventh wide receiver would be. In the unlikely scenario, KC keeps seven, he says. His answer was John Ross or D-Hop. This is the actual tweet. I agree John Ross has a better chance than Justin Ross at this juncture, but I don't think it will be at the expense of Justin Watson. They have now flipped. We've That's went from crazy. Justin Ross hype to now it's everybody's on John Ross's balls. What's going on? Well, first of all, we all know John Ross is probably not making this squad. There, There's a slim, slim chance for him to make it. Justin Ross's ceiling is so much freaking higher. We've said that since the beginning. Like, hey, you can't rely on Justin Ross to – we said he's on the cut line, right? That's what we've always said. He's kind of playing around that cut line. But, like, he has such a high ceiling. If you want to have a boomer bust guy on the team and just take your chances, you're going to go Justin Ross. If you go with John Ross, you know what you got. You got a guy that can run decently fast, might be able to return some kicks for you. But why do we need that? They already have Daenerys Prince slotted into that position pretty much before camp even starts. So I don't understand it. We've talked about the wide receiver room and how competitive it's going to be. Uh, we've talked about it over and over again. Will they keep six receivers? Will it be seven receivers? Which ones will will make the squad? And we're always like, well, Justin Ross is on that cut line. You got Richie James on that cut line. Justin Watson is even on that cut line, even though he's established. And right. it's just like, there's just so many good good players in that room. And then we're still talking about D-Hop wanting to come in to Kansas City and make this team even better, take them to the next level. So then it makes it very difficult. Look, to me... It's insane that you're going to say John Ross has a better chance of making this team than Justin Ross. The only reason they say that is because John Ross has special team ability. We don't need special team ability if you're taking Richie James for that fact, if you're bringing on Justin Watson for that fact alone. Sky Moore did it last year. We already have Rasheed Rice and Camp doing all the stuff. What are you talking about? Kadarius Tony returns points. We have tons of of potential there. You're going to have Daenerys Prince on the roster doing kickoff returns. You had Pacheco doing it last year. We know it's going to be Prince probably this year. Why do you need another special teams guy 
that hasn't hardly done anything in the NFL. He's too injury prone. It's insane right. to think that Justin Ross is not going to make this team uh, because of John Ross. There's plenty of other factors, but John Ross <laughs> right. is not one of them. I think the the only route I see where Justin Ross, where they just literally leave him off the roster, is if they go with six and Richie James takes that last spot. That would be my only guess. I think if D Hop gets on the team, they might they might go with Justin Ross and be like, hey, well, let's go ahead and give this guy a shot. We said that uh, from the beginning, right? So I mean, if you if you make your top five receivers that much stronger and that much better, then you can maybe take a shot on that sixth or seventh receiver. So yeah, Justin Ross's best chance of making this squad is if D Hop signs with the Chiefs, and of course we're waiting on Chris Jones to restructure and see what happens there, and and we kind of think maybe that's what everyone's waiting for. We saw where New England has made him an offer, right. and the Tennessee Titans have made him a more lucrative offer than the New England Patriots. And guess what? He still hasn't inked anything because yeah. he's just waiting around to see what the Chiefs are going to be able to offer him. Look, I- I'm going to give you some real talk here. This is real talk. Everybody, look into my eyes. Uh, Stop what you're doing. Just just listen for a second. Steve, everybody, we've already said this all offseason long. Justin Ross hype, 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 hype. And again, we've said kind of calm down. We like him. We were say, we were told that we made fun of Justin Ross's injuries. That is the farthest from the <laughs> truth. We lost subscribers over people not watching our video and listening to what we're saying. They just don't want to listen. It was nothing but Justin Ross hype. And all we said was, look, he's firmly on the cut line. He's going to be a bubble player. He's got to prove it. That's all we've ever said. And all Chiefs media, all Chiefs fans, Twitter, everybody, everywhere you went, this is all they talked about was Ross, 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 hype, right. hype, hype. And, and we were the ones kind of holding it down. And now the tides are turning. The tides are turning because we're getting closer to camp. We're getting right. closer to making these guys look stupid and have egg on their face. Because they know that Justin Ross was exactly what we said Justin Ross was. Justin Ross was a bubble player with a lot of potential, but he's got to prove it. And you well, know look. what? It's, it's irritating to me because I think this just means I like underdogs. Because now that they're crapping all over Justin Ross, I want him to make the team in spite of these idiots out here saying that he don't have a chance to make the team anymore. So now put me on the firm Justin Ross hype train. Well, it's, this is exactly what happened, Mike. Justin Ross was the hot topic. He was the trending topic in the Chiefs niche, right? For sure. So all content creators are going to make Justin Ross content. That's what they were doing. They were putting out Justin Ross video after Justin Ross video. The writers were putting out Justin Ross stories. Right. Because they were getting the clicks. They were getting clicks. They were getting views. They were getting, you know, everything they wanted. And they knew if they turn around and, and twist it now and say, hey, he's not making a 53-man roster, that when he doesn't, no one's going to remember all right. the hype videos. Nobody's going to remember, remember you saying that. These two that said. Oh, well, they said he wasn't going to make it. They right. said he wasn't going to make it. So he was he was correct. But guess what? They still got their big bunch of clicks and they still get to look like they're right about everything. That's what they're going for. They're trying to play both sides of the fence. But I think Chiefs Kingdom's too smart to fall for all that. But I mean, it's not a big deal either way. It is what it is. But I mean, when you really just strip it down to, hey, can Justin Ross make this squad? It all depends on Justin Ross. If he goes out in training camp and absolutely tears it up and, and shows that, hey, you guys can't take a risk on me getting poached from someone else. You have to put me on this 53-man roster or else you don't get me. That's what's yeah. going to determine it. Look, I like a good underdog story. Justin Ross started as an underdog. Everybody hyped him. I think everybody likes a good underdog story. Maybe it got to the point to where everybody jumped on board with Justin Ross and then everybody that pumped him up, now once you get too big, they love to see you fall. People love right. doing that. They love yeah. it. Yeah. They love it. Uh, but I'm starting to get behind Justin Ross more. I hope he's. I hope he makes it. I, I can't tell you any wide receiver I like or I don't like. There's nobody like that for me. I want every single person to make the roster. I want them all to succeed. I want the Chiefs to keep winning. I don't care who it is doing it. I just want them to win. But the thing right. is, with Justin Ross and the way everybody handled it and the way they're backpedaling now to try to save face, it's annoying to me. Uh, but let's move it along a little bit. We had Steve... An NFL executive, an anonymous executive, come out and take a shot at Chris Jones, uh, the Chiefs' defensive tackle, Chris Jones' 2022 All-Pro efforts. Uh, he goes on to say, there's no denying Kansas City Chiefs' defensive tackle, Chris Jones, was one of the best defensive players in the NFL last season. But one executive believes the 2022 All-Pro's efforts weren't as impressive as they appear on the surface. He tells ESPN's Jeremy Fowler, 
I think a lot of his production is inflated, and he's not always consistent against the run. The anonymous executive also added that there are other defensive tackles in the league that are more consistent and dominant than Chris Jones. Steve, no wonder this guy stayed anonymous because Chris Jones will put a foot up his ass probably if he finds out who it is. Well, we don't have to say anonymous. We can call them slap nuts. So slap nuts, slap nuts. Is, is saying really stupid stuff is what he's doing. It's just, I don't even know why you would do it anonymously because like the only reason you would say something that's stupid is to get some attention. Right. Chris Jones is obviously the best defensive tackle in football. I think he put his name in the hat last year as maybe being the best, even counting Aaron Donald. Aaron Donald played injured last year. Of course, he had more tackles total than Chris Jones. But as far as just taking over games and getting to the quarterback, Chris Jones was that man last year. Uh, yeah. Plain and simple. And he always is. And how, how do you inflate his stats? I mean, Chris Jones is not a guy that gets a lot of tackles. Like I said, like I think Aaron Donald had like tackles in the 40s or 50s last year. Chris Jones was like 20 tackles. He don't inflate stats. That's inflated stats. Dude, if anything but, about Chris Jones, yeah. he gets stats taken away from him from bogus calls constantly. They Absolutely. took away some of his sacks, some of his fumble recoveries. It's absurd to say that. Who on our defensive line, and how does our defense, if we're so disrespected, what is so good on our defense that makes Chris Jones inflated, by the way? Right. I mean, what what was our biggest uh, thing last year was we wanted somebody beside Chris Jones to let him completely wreck games. Right. We talked about it at the beginning of the season or, or even last offseason. Like, we even kind of played around with the idea of getting Ndamukong Sue in here just to see if we can get him beside Chris Jones and open up, you know, more one-on-one matchups for Chris Jones where he's not getting double teamed all the freaking time and just really wreck. And that's what we wanted. Well, we didn't get that. Chris Jones was playing with the same guys he always plays with. Turk Wharton was out all year. Right. And then he had Derek Naughty beside him. They ended up getting Brandon Williams, Danny Shelton, all kinds of guys trying well, to just I get somebody there. Right. I don't want to be rude. still went off. He still went the freak off. But these are a bunch of no-name guys. Chris Jones is carrying this team. He carries the defense. He carries right. everybody. George Karloftis was a rookie. had a pretty good season. It wasn't great. It wasn't like stand up and, and take over the world. He's going to be the next world beater at defensive end. Frank Clark's out here. He barely even shows up unless it's, what, right. the playoffs. There's nothing about this team that makes me think that we would succeed at all on defense without Chris Jones on it. They've they got to get this contract done. Uh, this anonymous <laughs> executive needs to shut up. Steve, any guess at who this anonymous a ho is? It's an NFL executive? I don't know. What's an NFL executive? It's got to be an NFL. It, it's got to be an AFC West rival, or it's got to be this, the Bengals written all over it. Yeah, that, it's somebody from the Bengals. That's it's what got I was that gonna chooch say. from the Bengals, the defensive Dude. coordinator. I forget his name. He thinks he's good because... Patrick Mahomes explodes in the second half by no fault of uh, uh, the Bengals guy, by the way. <laughs> Just it was Tyreek caused you all to, to look good on defense one good season. Yeah. Um, They're butthurt. They're butthurt because Chris Jones ended their season last year. These guys never in, in dramatic up. fashion. He said Burrow had my ass and he humped Joe Burrow into submission on the football field over and over again. And he, he told him that he's the man to get out of there. And then they're just mad. So now they want to talk trash. That's what they do. Get that guy Binky. Get Slap Nuts a Binky so we don't have to see any more stupid stories about Chris Jones on the internet. How about that? That time's yours. Time is yours, time Chiefs yours. Kingdom. We're going to check out some comments from our last video drop. Mike, what do we got first, man? First one up, at TKim1. We need a good depth, especially on the O-line. This is in response to Lucas Niang being possibly traded. Uh, that was the video. That's the reason we got crushed by Tampa Bay in the Super Bowl. Also, protecting Pat is a priority. Um, Steve, I don't think that cutting Lucas Niang hurts our um, no. offensive line depth, to be honest. No. The guy is never – he's always injured. <laughs> How does it he don't. add to the depth if he's always injured? Well, I mean, of course, the more you have, the more depth you have. But at the same time, in my opinion, I think he was probably like my third option, right? Like, I mean, if, say, Jawan Taylor were to go down, God forbid, and they had to put in a right tackle, I think they're going to go straight to Wanye, or right. I think they're going to let Darian Kennard have his shot. I don't think they're going to go with Lucas Yang. I just I like don't Prince see Tega it happening. More. Yeah, I like I was Prince ready to say, more. Even Prince. Is, is a better option. I just don't think that Lucas Yang's good. Look, I'm like, not a Lucas Yang <laughs> fan. sorry. You can look at all his numbers and his stats all you want. You can look at his PFF grade. They're not great. 
But at the same time, just watch the guy. If you just watch him play, he's horrible. He's getting beat all the time. He's never panned out the way we thought he was. Anybody that acts like Lucas Niang is good at football and good at offensive line is not paying attention. Like, I'm sorry, but Lucas Niang should not make this team. A lot of people think he's going to make the 53-man hands down. If he does, he does. But I don't agree with it. I don't agree with it. I don't think he's that good, and I think a lot of people would agree with us, Steve. Lucas Niang kind of stinks, and we could do without him. Um, Let's move it along. Right. Uh, Anthony Solis. He says the whole cheeseburger thing from last season is a prime example of exactly how much his players love and respect him. This was the whole thing about Andy Reid being a better coach than Belichick, how his players respect him. He's right, man. That video where they brought him the cheeseburger and uh, they come in the locker room, everybody loves Andy Reid, man. He's just a class act. Yeah, it was a Christmas present. That was a fun video, right? It's a Christmas present. But that's the thing about uh, Andy Reid, though. Like I've said before, he's, he's a player's coach. Everyone that plays for Andy Reid loves Andy Reid. Except for people like Le'Veon Bell, if if you're all about you, if you're all about yourself, like Tyree Kill, I mean Tyree Kill won't even say anything bad about Andy Reid. But I mean the thing about it is Andy Reid's such a player's coach. And he has such a, a tight knit team. He keeps a good locker room. He knows how to communicate with these guys. He, I mean we get guys on this team from all walks of life, man. Uh, different everything, and Andy Reid just has a knack for being able to communicate with these guys, to relate with these guys. Uh, to touch these guys in a way that inspires them to get out there and be awesome football players. And and they make really good connections with him, obviously. Frank Clark was looking at him like a father figure after he lost his father. It's just like, it's it's too obvious that he he's just a man. Uh, and it, what's, the, what's the opposite there? Bill Belichick just being an old grump and cheating all the time? Right. Like always saying something arrogant and crappy yeah. to everybody? And yeah, I, he acts like he no. don't want to be there. He's annoying. Andy Reid's cool. least respectful. Uh, right. The thing about Andy Reid, I think that's why the Chiefs become that place where if you made a mistake, you could come in. Because I think Brett Veach and everybody knows Andy Reid will help you. Uh, Josh right. Gordon, we never had no problems with him while he was here. Uh, he was a handful everywhere else he was. Right. Uh, it's just one of those things, man. He he's a Andy Reid's a good coach. Uh, we're lucky to have him. Uh, Chief Kelsey fifty seventeen says, "Awesome! Finally got my new D Hop video. <laughs> Thanks, guys. We did release a new D Hop video, Steve. Uh, the whole premise was that D Hop." pretty much guarantees he's going to go for 1,000 yards easily or he's going to retire. And he said he can do that till he's, what, 37, 38 years old? Right. I believe him. I have no reason to doubt D-Hop. Right. I mean, we were talking about this uh, before. People's always saying, well, he ain't even got 1,000 yards in the last two years. He's not good. He's he's lost a step and Dude, blah, blah, blah. We put it into perspective for these people. We did, Mike, like months ago. We're like, look, he was suspended for the first six games, guys. If he would play those six games, he was right. on pace at 1,400 yards receiving. And even in just a— With Kyler Murray. A, right. With with a little kid playing quarterback. And then Dude. just in 11 games, he was the best wide receiver in all of the NFL against man coverage. We're talking Devontae Adams. We're talking Justin Jefferson, Jamar Chase. No, it was none of those guys. Right. It was freaking DeAndre Hopkins. This guy can still play. He can still play the high level. And if we get him on this team— He's going to take our offense to the next level, right. and it's going to be a headache for teams to try Dude. to beat the Chiefs with that guy on the squad. D-Hop had Pee Wee Herman throwing him the football back there. He had right. uh, Gary Coleman back there <laughs> throwing him the rock. Three-foot-tall Kyler Murray. Uh, what you talking about? Get D-Hop in here. Just get him in here. Uh, Kyrie Durant says, come on, Chris Jones. Let's get you extended so we can get a true number one receiver in D-Hop. I think we're all on board with that, man, and I think D-Hop – I think D-Hop's waiting around. Like you said, they they come out with a story today. Um, I don't know who it was, CBS Sports somebody. They come out and said that there's two offers on the table. It's Mm got to be from the Titans. It's got to be the Patriots. If he wanted to be there, he'd be there already. He's waiting on something else. He's already got something in the bag. Uh, Let's move on to question number five here. Steven Watson on the comment. It's not a question. It's a comment. It's a comment that's a question. Here we go. How many good to very good players must the Chiefs let go to pay the huge amount D-Hop will expect to get? Well, the way it looks is if you restructure Chris Jones, they don't have to get rid of anybody. Like, right. there's nobody getting cut to bring in D-Hop. No. You got some guys that are playing probably their last year in Kansas City as is. Uh, Clyde edwards Delaire, he's on his contract year. You got LeJarius on his contract right. year. I highly doubt they sign either of those guys back. Willie Gay's up for debate. We'll see how that plays out. But, I mean, it is what it is, man. But if those guys get cut, it has nothing to do with signing D-Hop. No. Like, just because you pay D-Hop don't mean you can just go. Like, it doesn't matter if D-Hop comes Come in on. or not. Those guys are in the same situation at the end of the year. 
So you're not right. losing anyone to get D-Hop in here. And I just can't get on that side where they're just like, we don't need D-Hop. It's stupid. Why would we pay D-Hop? Well, why not? If you have the resources to do it and you can make your team better and you can win another Lombardi, that's the point of this whole thing, people, is to keep getting better and to keep winning. Two uh, points. That's Two what points. we're supposed to be doing. Two points that's what I'll Brett make. Veach, that's Brett Veach's job. Yeah. So that, I don't understand. You're right. Two points I'll make. Number one, D Hop makes the wide receiver room better. He makes the Chiefs better. I don't care who you are. If you look at us straight in the face and you say D Hop would not make this team better, you do not understand football. You don't understand NFL football. D Hop's one of the best to ever play the game. He's one of the best receivers in the game today. 31 is not a decrepit old fart that can't do anything. Like, you guys are acting like 31 is 75. Like, come on. Like, even 75 year olds, I probably know 75 year olds can get out here and run some routes, by the way. Like, he's not. 80 or 100 like right this dude's 31 years old and he's not even played a full season due to suspension and stuff so he's got a little less wear and tear on him and then point number two brett veach and Andy reed have tried to trade for this guy why are you guys out here thinking you're smarter than brett veach and veach we trust and everybody's right. like we don't need him what are you talking about well brett veach thought we needed him or they wouldn't yeah, have reached right. out to him steve can i make point number three for you make point three DeAndre Hopkins has never had a quarterback even close to Patrick Mahomes. Exactly. The closest thing to him was Wacker back in Houston uh, oh when he was gosh. still young before he started getting all those massages. But, I mean, that's the closest thing to it. And he's still been one of the most elite receivers in football, and he's done this with crap hey, hole quarterbacks. I don't so, think it was before the massage, though. I think he was getting the massage at the same time. I think that was as, giving as him as his was powers. Playing? Someone was giving him the massage on the field while he was think, playing at the same it, time? It was It was a powerful... <laughs> It was powerful. <laughs> we never know what this guy. Maybe he had something stuck in his jock strap. That poor center. I feel sorry for that center. <laughs> I thought you just called him a center. Like a Both. horrible center. <laughs> Going to hell, boy. Okay, here we go. Uh, Mobius8473. Bro, turn off your phone, Steve. Bro, who were you listening to in Kansas City that said Justin Ross could be a number one receiver in the NFL? That's more than a stretch. Other than local guys talking about how he can make camp heroes and number one, he's legitimately going to be good. What is this guy talking about, Steve? Where's he been? Under a rock for the last eight years? Ever since Justin Ross has signed pen to paper to come to Kansas City, everybody, everybody said he's number one, he's the man. Like, what is this right. guy talking about? I mean, there was a lot of people that were trying to be reasonable about it, but they were always given the benefit of the doubt to Justin Ross. But you had a big chunk of cheese kingdom that, that, that really thinks – that he could be a wide receiver one, that we don't need a D-hop because we have Justin Ross. He can do that. He can do that. Wait and see. Wait and see. You got to you, you gotta listen to us. He's right. going to be awesome. Just, I don't know what you're talking about. How are you not seeing this? Well, now we're starting to see them backpedal, as we discussed earlier. And, yeah, I don't know, man. There were definitely people out there saying that he could be a wide receiver one, and there were definitely people out there that are just dead wrong, and they didn't want to admit it. Dude, we talked about that in the entire first segment. Every single person in Chiefs' kingdom – be it just a random Joe Schmo on Twitter or uh, the biggest content creator in the world on YouTube or uh, Vivo, wherever the world people get their news from, everybody's out here just all over Justin Ross. That's all they did. What What is this guy talking about? Like, hey, don't come in our comments saying stupid stuff like that because if you're going to tell me <laughs> that nobody's hyped Justin Ross up, that we're crazy, that, that, that we're living in a fictional world – and nobody's ever hyped Justin Ross. You're out of your mind. <laughs> like, what are you hey, doing? This guy's a slap nuts and a half, bro. You know what we need to do for him? God, we, he needs a lot of things. We need to lob one up. I'm going to lob it up to you right now. Here we go. Boom shakalaka. Boom shakalaka. <laughs> Dude. Hey, man, I lobbed that up so high, my headphones almost come unplugged. That's what happens. Uh, but with that, time is yours. Uh, let's move it along here, Steve. Ex-Chiefs running back Kareem Hunt breaks silence on still being a free agent. Um, I found this story today, and I thought it was, you know, it, it's Chiefs Kingdom loves Kareem Hunt. <laughs> At least there's a certain segment. They still think he's going to come back. They just can't get him out. They just can't get him out of their head and their hearts. Mike. Right. That's all it is. <laughs> the story says, I'm just being patient, Hunt said via the News Herald. I've had some things come up, but right now I'm enjoying my time with my family, and I'm training and working hard and just staying ready. Sounds like to me, Steve, uh, he's not getting a lot of interest. That's what that sounded like to me. Well, he's a running back. We've talked about this over and over again. Running backs aren't getting the interest that they normally do. I think the running back's dead in the NFL you right now. You still see Zeke sitting around. No one really cares about Zeke right now. 
Dalvin Cook hasn't yet to sign with anybody, and that was the hot topic whenever he was released by Minnesota. Uh, they can't get the deal done with Saquon up there in New York, the extension that he wants. It's just it's not a valued position anymore. Let's right. just put it that way. And and the Chiefs have been a prime example of why they're they're not because they've been able to go in the seventh round and grab Isaiah Pacheco and turn around and win a freaking Super Bowl with him as their RB1. And then they go and get Daneric Prince, who could potentially come in and show them the same thing this year. Like, look, we got somebody off the UDFA wire, and he's a beast. So, like, I think the Chiefs why would have you ultimately go- killed the running back position. <laughs> I don't know if it was them single-handedly, but they definitely played a part in it because they're just a showing you that it doesn't matter. Yeah, a, a big row. Look, here, a little over four years after being cut by the Chiefs in season, Kareem Hunt's value is slipping as each day passes. Terry Pluto of Cleveland.com reveals on April 9th why Hunt might still be a free agent. He says, I kept hearing from the Browns that Hunt was slipping in terms of speed. He's averaged a career low 3.8 yards per carry. Pro Football Focus ranked him 53rd out of 62 qualifying running backs, Steve. We've said this. He's losing it. When running backs get to the 27, 28, 29-year-old, it's different. It's different than wide receivers. It's different than everything else because these guys get hit so much more. They absorb yeah. so much contact and wear and tear. It's different. The NFL is changing. It looks like to me right now, Dalvin Cook's not even going to take the offer. Apparently, the Dolphins have got an offer out there, and he's not wanting to take it. What are the Dolphins trying to give him? They're probably trying to give him Cheerios or something. They're probably trying to give him a reasonable contract, but Dalvin Cook thinks he's worth a, a big boatload of money. And it's not going to happen because he's a running back. Well, this Saquon is Barkley's in the same situation. He's holding out. Josh Jacobs is holding out. You guys have no leverage right now. The NFL is moving away from the running back position. You can do it with seventh-round picks and UDFAs. You do not have to pay out the butt to get those. But we did say, Steve, there was a place Kareem Hunt could end up. And who did we say? We said the Washington Washington. Commanders with Eric the Enemy could give him a look. That's what it says in the report. Among the teams that could potentially be interested in signing Kareem Hunt is the Washington Commanders. A CBS insider, a senior insider... Josina Anderson actually says, I'm told the commanders have quietly been making some preliminary inquiries behind the scenes on free agent running back Kareem Hunt, Kareem Hunt per league source. We'll see if this leads to an opportunity for Hunt with Washington. That's what we've been saying, man. If if the enemy don't give him a shot, Kareem Hunt might be playing for Pebbles next year uh, on the Ravens or something. I could see the team like the Ravens that want to run the ball a lot right. and give him something here and there. But he's not going to be able to get the big money he's wanting. Kareem Hunt's never going to be as successful as he was early in his career with the Chiefs. It's just not going to happen. The only place that he could do that is in Kansas City, and that bridge has been burned. He's not coming back to Kansas City. So it is what it is, man. He's just going to have to live with what he can get, and I I think Washington's probably the best fit for the guy, to be quite honest about it. I think he's still a good player. I think he was good in in Cleveland. Of course, he had to split with Nick Chubb. So, I mean, obviously, how many touches are you going to get when he's on your team? Hey, coincidence that Wacker's playing with a guy named Chubb? I don't know. Um, I don't I know about Cleveland this. right now. I was going to ask you, what's the thought of Kareem Hunt ever coming back to Kansas City? There's a lot of big Chiefs. There's a chunk of the kingdom that thinks this is possible. I don't. I don't think you think it. I think the bridges have been burned. Uh, Lamar Hunt, everybody, was it Clark Hunt? It was one of them, said that it was over with. He's not coming back. He's never coming back. He lied. He lied. They just wanted the truth, and they were going to right. probably cut him some slack, and he just lied to their faces. I can't see him ever putting a Chiefs uniform back on. Not happening. I don't even know why it's a discussion anymore. I mean, we've talked about it before <laughs> because everybody was, you know, putting it out there. Hey, we need to have a reunion with Kareem right. Hunt. Uh, and, and it happened every freaking year. Every time, you know, everybody would say something about it every year. And finally, we just kind of told everyone last year, no, the bridge is burnt, not happening, it. end of story. It, it's not happening. It's, no. It's not happening. Uh, we have NFL writer Connor Orr. He come out, okay, and uh, this article he put out was an unlikely Chiefs wide receiver praised as the most underrated KC player. Uh, he says, KC general manager Brett Veach decided to re-sign the role player to a two-year contract ahead of the 2023 NFL draft, awarding him $1.08 million in guaranteed money. Now on June 22nd, Sports Illustrated NFL writer Connor Orr shows Justin Watson some rare praise by labeling him the Chiefs' most underrated player ahead uh, of the 2023 campaign. He says only two Chiefs wide receivers play more snaps than Justin Watson did last year. Some people may call this evidence of an underwhelming receiving core, but I strongly disagree. 
He goes on to say, I think Kansas City's receiving core is full of stylistic compliments, all different body types and expertise that help Andy Reid manipulate offenses however he sees fit. Or went on, Watson plays a part in that. He is also a great space creator, a player who seems to understand the offense well and can run routes in a way that clears out space and moves certain defenders. Or provides a prime example for fans, stating back in week 12, he was matched up frequently on Jalen Ramsey early in the game and would keep him isolated on one side of the field. Steve, Justin Watson is going to make this roster this year. He's going to make one of these. If we take six, he's going to be on it. If they take seven, he's going to be on it. Chiefs Kingdom has to get used to this. I think Justin Watson's on the team. I do, but I also think Justin Watson's mid. We have a, a lovely lady in our comments all the time named Julia Gulia that likes to say, hey, Justin Watson's mid, and she's exactly right. I'm never excited about Justin Watson. Well, who who's not mid if you're the number six option or the number five option on your team? Right. But like he was like, the number three in most routes ran last year. Was were we that bad at wide receiver last year? That the the biggest think, mid guy in the game goes number three. No, but we did have injuries. I mean, he had to play. I mean, it is what it is. But I don't think it's anything to. I don't know how anyone gets super excited about Justin Watson. I just don't. Like if he were to be cut and I'm not even put him on this roster, I wouldn't bat an eye at it. I just wouldn't. Look I don't dislike guy. Justin Watson. I think that he's reliable. I think that Mahomes likes him. I think that they have a pretty good little chemistry going. And he made some great plays last year. But it's just not somebody that excites me. It's not somebody that makes me be like, man, we have to have this guy on the roster or the Chiefs aren't going to be any good. Look, I don't think you have to have Justin Watson to succeed. But I think we forget about Justin Watson. A lot of people are are saying to cut him. They're saying that he should be gone and they're ready to give it to rookies or this or that. I think Patrick Mahomes trusts him. I think he trusts him. I think Justin Watson's going to be on the roster. I think it's the way it is. And, um... We just got to get used to it, man. I, do, would you cut him over Richie James? Yes. You cut Justin Watson over Richie James without Probably. watching Richie James play it all in a uniform. I mean, Richie James is coming off a pretty good year with Daniel Jones and them. And I feel like, I don't know, man. I, I'm i just not that big on Justin Watson. Like I said, I don't dislike the guy, but he does nothing for me. I don't I don't feel the need to fight for Justin Watson Why to be on this angry? roster. You're so angry I'm right not. now over Justin Watson. <laughs> I don't even want to talk about him. Dude, this is what I'm trying to say. (laughs) Is that the wide receiver is a big, this is a big training camp thing with the Chiefs. It's trying to figure out who's six. Are we going to keep seven? Is it probably going to be six? And Justin Watson's on that bubble. So you've got Justin Watson, Richie James. We've already discussed Justin Ross. Watson looks like he's got the clear-cut favorite. I mean, there's a reason Veach went out and signed him to a two-year extra deal. They made it out next year, but for this year, it's looking like he's on the roster. But I think he will be. I don't think it's a question, to be quite honest about it. I mean, the only way I could see that happening is if they bring D-Hop in and they want to put Justin Ross on the roster, maybe they can go ahead and let Justin, uh, Watts, J- J- Justin, Jason, Justin, whatever, Watson. Justin Watson, get it right. Okay, freaking Sherlock Holmes, get him on. Who cares? Who cares? That's where I'm at with it, baby. This guy hates Justin Watson today. He's not feeling it. Uh, but you did mention D-Hop. Everybody's like D-Hop, D-Hop, D-Hop. We want D-Hop. I understand it, but Arrowhead Addict come out with a thing, and they're like, hey, look, if we don't get D-Hop, we have some consolation trades we can make midseason. Kind of like Kadarius Tony last year. Tony turned out okay. This is the first one they throw out. Uh, Kansas City Chiefs future trade candidate, Terrace Marshall from LSU. Do you remember Terrace Marshall coming out a few years ago? They yep. say from time to time, we'll take a look at midseason trade ideas to remind Chiefs fans there will be others available down the road. Down the road? Like, let's stop thinking about down the road and just get D-Hop in here. Let, let's stop worrying about Terrace Marshall and get D-Hop in the Chiefs uniform. How about right. That? We can't even figure out what we're doing with the wide receivers this year. And these guys are looking to maybe a trade that we can make next year or something or mid-season or whatever. First of all, Terrace Marshall is not a bad receiver. I don't think you've seen what he can do yet. Uh, was he not hurt his entire rookie season? I'm not for sure. He's either unproven. Way, we'll put it that way. I'm still, this is kind of in the same boat with me as talking about Justin Watson, to be quite honest. Like, there's so much to talk about with our receiver room right now. Uh, why are we adding to it? Like, I, I don't understand. This is if you don't have whole, D-Hop. That's their premise. Who cares? We don't have D-Hop, so let's go trade for My point is this. Yeah, I'm kind of with you. We don't need D-Hop, according to these people. We don't need D-Hop. But you know what we do need? We need to go trade for another receiver because our receivers are not that good. What are you talking about? Like, what are you talking about? 
Like, I just don't see it. I don't get it. I don't understand it. They actually go on to say uh, he's been in the in the NFL for two years now. It, it's not exactly taken off. He has 45 catches for 628 yards and a single touchdown to his name. I, I don't get it. They do say he's a big, lengthy target with amazing speed and could remind some Chiefs fans of Marquez Valdez Scantling. People in the Chiefs community don't even love Marquez Valdez Scantling. Why are know. we going to get another one? I'm just confused with all this of this. This is the this is the depths of hell of the off season. You got people so just too. trying to make stories up just to have something to put out. And man, we have to talk about this stuff, and it, it's difficult to even freaking talk about. So I don't even know how they're writing this. I really don't. I do too. And with that, man, you guys watch a video that you think YouTube is it, it thinks you're going to love, man. So just go ahead and watch that. And thanks for subscribing, <laughs> hitting that bell. Uh, we'll catch you guys next time. I, I, I,